Hi, Frank Frost here again, turning on the lights in the Hall of Truth again today. I have a special guest here today that wants to tell his story, and he's told his story to many people in our system. Now, we're told from an early age, you see a crime being committed, you have to go and alert the authorities, or you are an accessory to that crime. This person went through great lengths over the last 16 years, contacted every government agency, the RCMP, all of them, to investigate this crime. But because of our system, the way it's set up, he has been a victim just like they did to me when I reported, reported the murder of a child and the molestation of a child. They victimized me. And they did the same thing to this person. They've even made numerous attempts on his life. And I'm talking about the RCMP. He has went through great lengths. Great lengths, as I have to bring these people to justice. Yeah. Justice in our society. And I'm talking about you and me now, the ordinary person. That's our society. They have their own, as they express in Section 7 of the Charter. They hide all these things, they say, for the greater good. They make everybody believe that everyone that works within the system are perfect. And they wouldn't possibly do these things. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> not at all. But I'm here to tell you, and my guest is here to tell you, that that is not the case. There are all kinds of people working within our system that shouldn't be there. I would be wrong to say that all cops are bad or all judges and all lawyers and generalize in that sort of way because that's not true. We got a lot of rotten apples but the one that's running the orchard is not picking out those rotten apples and that's what needs to be done. I'm not out to destroy our system. Our system is flawed. The biggest way is that they don't work for you and me. They work for the system and everything for the greater good of that system. Not for your greater good or my greater good. It has nothing to do with that. These people swear allegiance to some bitch in England and they hide behind that skirt to do these crimes upon you and me and make us victims. The minute we report one of these people, they attack you. With all their resources, I've been living the dream, and my friend that's here today, I can guarantee you, has lived that dream for 16 years plus now. And his family has been victimized, him and the families of the actual victims that were murdered have been victimized as well by our so-called representatives. The people they say work for you and me. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, and he's here to tell you, that that's not who they work for. So, without going into anything else too much uh, more, I'm going to introduce my guest now. Mr. Lonnie Landrum of Quinnell, B.C. And grab a seat here, Lonnie. Now, Lonnie has agreed to do this video and mostly because I don't edit nothing. Nothing. Whatever is said on this camera is what happens. I have the copyrights to this video as Lonnie has agreed to. I do agree. And anyone can 
upload or download or whatever you want to do, load this video and send it to whoever you want. And I'm going to go to Lonnie here now and Lonnie, uh, start from wherever you want to start and tell your story. Well, I'd like to start. Uh, a lot of people have been judging me without understanding the story. Yeah. Uh, so I want to give you a full understanding. Where this started, where, where, it's, where it's come to this point, where I'm doing this. I'm not doing this for any self-gain or any self-benefit. Yeah. I put myself here because I'm standing up for one reason, and that's our children. And I don't believe that these people have the right to do this to me or our children. And I will stand in front of them till the day I die. It all started back when I was out the Itchy Mountains. And it's gone on and on and on. And all I did was trying to stand up for the truth. And the truth stands for itself, in my belief. I, when I come back from the Itchy Mountains, I was sexually assaulted by Bev Hosker. I went to the Complaints Commission and, and laid sexual assault charges against her because I was pulled over by eight RCMP members. The one that I didn't mouth off, my brother did. And I've been a victim of this system since then. When I tried to stay out of uh, the drug trade, because I had been involved in the drug trade when I was a kid. I grew up on the streets. And I want people to understand this. I did grow up on the streets of Quinnell. And I had been victimized prior to. When I tried to stand up, I got sexually assaulted and I did charge her for sexual assault. Which no investigation ever took place. I went to the Complaints Commission. No investigation ever took place. Now this Bev Hodgson, was she a cop or who Yeah, was she was a member of the RCMP. Member of the RCMP. Okay. Yep. And the one that my brother most off, most off at the Itchy Mountains yeah. was a member of the RCMP, uh, Bob Zimmerman. Okay. And he chose to victimize me. Three days after I come out of the Itchy Mountains, I was attacked by eight members of the RCMP during me uh, driving somebody home and listening to them express to me what they had just saw about an abduction done by the RCMP. And who was the who was the person that was supposed to be have, have been Bob attacked? Johnson or uh, Johnson? I think his name was Johnson. Uh, I can't. Uh, and that's the person that was abducted. That yeah, and they, okay. yeah, and they still haven't found him. Okay. Um. <coughs> oh, they haven't found him at all. No. Okay. Um, they took him down to the airport. They flew him onto the airport and took him for an airplane ride, and they haven't found him since. Okay. I mean, these people. The RCMP are victimizing me. Every aspect that I've gone against or, and try to stand up to and try to be honest with, these people have all run, run and hid behind their mandates and their policies. I, I, hmm, how can I explain that? They victimized you by reporting a crime. That's right. Yeah. Right from the start. Okay. Uh, when I tried to stand up to it, they come after me. Uh, they tried to drag me back into the drug trade that I already walked away from. Mm -hmm. And I chose not that life. 
I walked away from that life. I knew the RCMP were involved in the drug trade because I sold drugs right out my front door. I chose not to go, like, I chose not to go with the drug trade. I they were encouraging you to go back into the drug trade. That's right. They were trying to drag me back into it. I threatened one of their paid informants, Diane Pucineco. And it was a paid informant for Paul Collister. And there was two girls standing there, and there was Dean Lynn and Bram and Daniel Dent. And the other one was, that was in the car, she wasn't out the car, was uh, Christine Love. The, the person that, that was with Dina when she disappeared. I had threatened their cop, or their paid informant, I should say. Yeah. I told her, I says, you know, I said, don't bring my name up. I'll slit your throat. Yeah. It was three weeks later that I walked into this murder and the only reason I went that way is that there was people running around uh, Brotherson's Gavins behind J.D. Meats. They call it the Grove now, it's a drug tree yeah. Yeah. place. Yeah. And they, were, they had these cops guns that they stole off these cops and they were robbing people. Well, I just got paid. I went for a walk one night, and I had seen them kill Dean Lynn and Bram. Seen who? Paul Collister, Diane Pusineko, and Bev Hosker. Uh, there was a police car sitting there, and a green van. I believe it was green. I couldn't really tell the color from the... Oh, it was dark, was it? Yeah, well, yeah, it was like 1.30 in the morning. I, went, I just went for a pack of smokes okay. and walked into the middle of this. Okay. And Diane Pusineka was sitting there, who is a paid informant. Yeah. Everybody knows she's a paid informant. Yeah. And since that time, I've had 13 attempts on my life. Mm -hmm. Tried every aspect of government to try to have this investigated. They've all hid behind their mandates and their policies. Yeah. Where are all the, where are these cops now? Do you know where uh, Collister is? Uh, I I had to go to the family to get uh, an investigation started. That's the only reason I got an investigation started. Yeah. Uh, was going to the family, and I chose not. I didn't want to go to the family. That was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to victimize many more than they already had been. Yeah. Yeah. But I knew the rest of the story, and I mean. The story is a story, and I mean, I lived this. Yeah. There's nobody can ever say me wrong. Yeah. I ain't out to impress nobody. No, there you go. I ain't, I ain't out for self-benefit or self-gain. Yeah. Okay, so do you, do you know where Collister is now, where he's working? Is he still here in uh, Pinell, or uh, has he disappeared? The, or the, last I heard, or? the last I heard, he was in Saskatchewan. Okay. And what about the woman cop? Where is she? Do you know where she is, huh? Where she's living? She's dead. She's dead? She's dead. Oh, do you have any idea how she died? Uh, she died in a car accident that I believe she, what, that was arranged. Oh. Uh, no, they well, probably well, drugged her with the same drugs they used on yeah. my friend, but I can only assume for myself. Yeah. I mean... Was she still a cop when she died, or did she...? No, actually she, she left the RCMP after this started coming out. Oh, okay. Uh, I phoned 911, and since the time I phoned 911, I've been victimized. Yeah. And all I was trying to do was the right thing, yeah. because I knew the rest of the story, but I knew the, I knew the beginning of the story when, when I was going out with a girl named Sonia McCray, yeah. and she lived in Brothers' cabins, and I was only 17, 18 years old, living on the street, and I was sleeping with her. And she had moved into Collister's. 
And she had laid there and told me stories about how he beat his wife. And if anybody wanted to know the rest of that, you just ask all the nurses because they all know. Uh, there's all kinds of people that know nobody wants to stand up. And I ain't here to be nobody's hero. Yeah. I ain't doing this for self gain. Yeah. I'm trying to stay alive. Yeah. And I ain't out to impress nobody. Yeah. I just trying to protect our kids. And I figured that's if it ain't if it ain't for that reason. Yeah. Now at some point, uh uh Collister and other R C P officers uh came to your home uh to kill you, isn't that a fact? Yes. And I shot him in my house. Yeah. He and came in where alone. did you shoot him? I shot him in the left arm with a twelve gauge shotgun with a number four bird shot. Yeah. And nobody in government will stand up and say and get and get the medical records. Yeah. They they all sent me to the <coughs> complaints commission. Yeah, well, of course. Which under Canadian law yeah. has no mandate to investigate the RCMP. And did nothing for you. And did nothing. Yeah. Never investigated it. Yeah. When I when I when I tried to ask them about the medical records, yeah. they told me to fuck off. <laughs> of course they did. Yeah, yeah, because I'm trying to hold them accountable, and there's no accountability in government. Yeah. Uh, my last letter that I sent out, which I will post. Yeah. And by the way, we're going to be posting all of Lonnie's letters that he sent, and all the responses and the non-responses that he got from all of these people that he tried to contact and, and told them the story in his letters, and uh, they did nothing. But we're going to post them all anyway on a separate card so you can view all the documents as well as watch this interview. Now, uh, and, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Lonnie. No, no, I understand, Frank. Uh, hey. It, this is so overwhelming that I can't even believe that this is happening in Canada. Yeah. I mean, I feel myself that they are discrediting all our forefathers before us that stood up to fight the Great War, yeah. both both of them, yeah. to find us freedom. Yeah. And now we're living in a society where there's no accountability on their side. Yeah. And... All I've ever asked for was a criminal investigation in the RCMP. Yeah. And I've been victimized right from the hop right to now. And I've had 13 attempts. I'm suffering multiple injuries. Yeah. Now, you're, you know, you mentioned a little bit ago about, you know, like other people. Now, right. uh, like I hear all kinds of horrific stories from people, you know, and, uh, they, they, they don't want to say anything, come on a camera like this and, and speak up because they're afraid. That's right. Now, uh, when, you, when you do speak up and, and, and you're, you're victimized by the system, but the minute the system realizes that you're out there fighting them anyway, they, you cease to become a victim. They just try to ignore you, right? That's right. And, you know, so, you know, I'm, I'm making an appeal now to other people that are out there. Uh, I've heard all kinds of horrific stories. How many stories, Lonnie, and I'm just asking a question, because how many people have contacted you with horrific stories of their own? I've, I've talked to 20,000 people plus wow. in the 14 years that yeah. I've been through this yeah. and the 13 attempts. Yeah. And, and, and uh, these people, you know, they, they, they want me to talk about their stories and want Lonnie to talk about their stories, but they don't want their name mentioned. Because they're scared. They yeah. live in fear. And they live yeah. in fear. And so what I, what I say to you people is that if you're going to contact me or contact Lonnie or anyone that's speaking up, be prepared to stand up as well. Speak up. That's what protects you. You know? And uh, you people hide, uh, the people that are hiding from this yeah. has left me being a victim. Yeah. And I don't want to be nobody's victim. I'm just a witness. Yeah, there you are. I mean, that's the problem is that, you know, you're a witness to a horrific crime. Exactly. And, and I asked for one thing. Yeah. 
justice. Criminal investigation. There you go. But That's nobody what has is. no I've contacted every government agency. I've been through the IIO. The IIO had a mandate from the day they were implemented. Yeah. Uh, and that was after Shirley Bond had a full understanding of my situation. Mm -hmm. she was and, the and she's general. the one that signed the, the, the mandate. Yeah. And I feel like I'm being victimized by my own system and these people work for me. Yeah. I mean, I thought I had some rights and I have no rights. Yeah. Absolutely none. The charter rights doesn't exist for me because... There you go. Because it's not for the greater good. That's right. It's right. A, they've invented all their policies and all their mandates to protect themselves. Yeah, there you go. Now, you mentioned Shirley Bond. Um, name out uh, as many people as you can remember that you wrote and spoke to or what have you within our system, within our, like our, 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 our uh, political system uh, that you spoke to and wrote to. So, you know. Okay. As many as you can. Okay. Well, I started off by writing Paul Martin. Mm -hmm. And every other government agency that I had a comprehension of that might have a, yeah. a mandate against them. Yeah. Every one of them responded that I should go to the Complaints Commission. Yeah. Every one of them. And our complaints commission has no mandate to investigate the RCMP. Right. They they review paperwork put forth by the RCMP. The RCMP investigate themselves. Right. Now with Bill C fifty one, yeah, they want to do this to ceases and give them unlimited control. Yeah. And I make a terrorist out of you and me, and and make me a terrorist for <laughs> what I'm doing. Yeah, of course. And I mean, I'm only trying to deal with the truth here. Yeah. I mean, I asked for one thing, yeah. to investigate. I got enough knowledge here to, to probably solve the highway of tears, but nobody's interested in that. Oh, no, of course and not. And I mean, and it ain't just me, but people are afraid to stand up. Yeah. So I'm standing up today for one reason, Frank, for our children. Right. You're right. That's, I mean, they are the ones that are going to feel the repercussions of what we don't do. Our choices are if what we don't do us. it, they're going to pay the price. Quit running. Yeah, that's that, right. You know, exactly. I, I ran across country eight miles in bare feet, yep. broke my frickin' foot. Yeah. That's the night they, they attacked They you. tried to murder me in yep. my own home and I yep. shot the cop. Yeah. And they stalked me. And they stalked me and stalked me, and I got all the evidence. I mean, if I I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't have the evidence. Do you know who those other cops were that were? That were the ones who were there. Yeah, uh, there was Paul Collister that came into my home. Yeah. The one I shot. Yeah. In the left there. Yeah. Uh, when I when I ran out the door, I went to close the gun, and it was a defunct gun. Yeah. Uh, I'd been pulled over in Malakula with a loaded gun because yeah. it was jammed. Yeah. That gun went off by itself yeah. when I closed it. Yeah. I blew a hole through my 100 pump, 100 pump propane tank. Yeah. And when I, I thought it was going to explode, I ran out the front door. I, I stepped on his arm. I know I blew his arm up. I mean, I believe it was his arm. Yeah. I mean, it could have been his sleeve or. Yeah. But there was a, hand, a 38 caliber handgun laying in, in the damp at the end of the, what I thought was an arm. I mean, I seen yeah. it for one second. Yeah. I ran across country and it, it was Ken, Ray Kinlock, Constable Ray Kinlock, yeah. Constable Coltier. Yeah. They come across the landing at me. I ran back down the ridge and ran out in the field. Mm -hmm. I got across the field. And I seen the police car sitting on my gate. Never trying to tear my, tear my gate down, trying to get calls to other so he didn't bleed to death. Yeah. And it was Constable Barkman, Constable Anderson, Constable McMillan. They're at my gate, and I didn't know all their names at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't pro they don't put their names out there so yeah. you, you know who they of course, are. You learn their names after the fact. After the fact. Okay, but you could identify them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's and, all. That's how you got the names. And, and when I went to court, I gotta say this. Yeah. When I went, did it go to court? Yeah. A different con constable Anderson showed up. Wow. He was six feet tall and brown hair. Yeah. Oh, well, the one that was at the gate was a little uh, five foot six yeah. Newfoundlander yeah. Yeah. back from back me. east. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And he was the one that pulled me over. But when yeah. I went to court for my my impaired, yeah. because they were trying to victimize me. Yeah. So they come after me. They knew that I was at the. Yeah. Where they were, they knew it every night where I was. Yeah. I always went to the Billy Barker Hotel, and I wanted to associate with people because I like people. And they just victimized me. They come after me. They've still come after me. Yeah. They wanted they wanted your firearms taken from you as well, didn't they? In court. That's that's right. They yeah. they testified in court that I was dangerous to police. Yeah. But they were never there. Yeah. And <laughs> and, and, and I'm kind of wondering. How are you dangerous to police well, if they weren't there? If they weren't there, I mean, it's my house. If I want to shoot through my door, I can shoot through my door. Yeah. Uh, normally, I wouldn't shoot through my door. No, of course not. Unless I want to tech, 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 or check the thickness of it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. real's real. Yeah, that's right. You know, and that's what I'm trying to be. Yeah. And this is the reason I'm doing this, yeah. is because we have to get real. And hold these people accountable. Yeah. This Bill C-51 that they're bringing out. As far as I'm concerned, the cover-up by the RCMP goes right to Ottawa, right to our politicians, All and right to Stephen Harper's and every politician's office. They all because know. Because they all know. And yeah. and all my documentation will be out there. Yeah. Uh, well, Claire. Justin Trudeau, uh, Christy Clark, yeah. everything that I was told to do, yeah. I've been through. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. There is nothing I haven't done. Yeah. They're supposed to report because the crimes. I will stand up for our children yeah. for the my whole life. Yeah. Good for you. And anybody that thinks that I'm doing this for self gain. Better come and talk to me, and I'll show you the truth. Well, let's 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 go back a little bit now to the actual witness, <coughs> the, the crime you witnessed of oh. of, uh, of uh, that girl. What's your name? Dean Lynn Brim. Dean Lynn. Okay. Uh, now, let's 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 go back to that. Okay. And describe exactly what you saw these two cops and that uh, paid informant do. Okay. Now this could be hard for me, Frank, and I, I tell you. I know, I know. Because I gotta relive it. this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I went for a pack of smokes, walking up the trail. I I just had sixteen hundred dollar paycheck in my pocket. Yeah. I just heard that there was robberies going on at the grove. Yeah. And that's what they call the drug dealers down yeah. there. Yeah. I chose not to go that way. I thought, no, I'll just walk up to uh, Pinnacles Park yeah. and go get a pack of smokes. Mm -hmm. I was out of cigarettes. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm a yeah. smoker, but uh -huh. Uh, whatever. That was my <laughs> choice, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Uh, what I walked into, I heard, I, had, I heard motors running. And I'm kind of self perceptive. And when I got up there, I looked over the hill and I seen this police car with lights on both sides. In front of the police car was a green band. I believe it was green. I, yeah. It may have been blue. It could have yeah. been. Yeah. And I seen there, oh, seen Collister get, get out of the van, and I had known Paul Collister because of the threat that I give his paid informant. Yeah. Bev Hosker was there and I knew her because she sexually assaulted me. Yeah. Diane Puchinickel, I've, I've always known she's a rat. I, I grew up on the street, so I... Yeah. Yeah. 
But these are the people that I seen, and the feet that were sticking out of the rug, and it was, I believe it was a beige carpet. Uh, the light in the back of the van, when you lifted the back door, it's hard to tell. It could have been green. I don't, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, after all the nightmares I lived through, it's hard to tell, right? Yeah. But anyway. No, and then I watched them through their throat, and I watched Bev Hosker. Was, was she alive at the time? I don't know. Oh. Uh, the way the blood flow, like, and blood looks black at night. Yeah. And, God, i never seen anything like that in my life. Of course. Of course. They're ripping. Now, they slit her throat, and, like, what else did they do to her, if anything? Well, I ran. I, I don't remember getting back to the trailer. Right. I have no fucking concept. Like, I just ran. I just went, like, what the fuck? I just walk into... Yeah, yeah. And I got back to the trailer. Mm -hmm. And my first concept was... On the RCMP. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what you're told to do, right? That's right. That's, you were reported to the authorities, they say, right? That's right. Yeah. So, they, they, they see... What they forget to tell you is that you're supposed to report all crimes except the ones that they do. And that's why you become a victim. It's because the minute you report a crime that they do, they victimize you. Just like they did to me when I reported the murder of Carrie's child and the molestation that she suffered as a child by their, her father and two lawyers, Ken Aziz and James Turner. The minute I did that, they attacked me, just like the cops did to Lonnie. And every, That's what they do. And everybody else is controlled through fear. Yeah, and the only way to get around these people is put it out on the social media first. Stand up. Then go and tell the rest of them, because if you don't, they will victimize you. If you if you tell your story out here on the social media sitting next to me as Ollie's doing, they can't attack you. If they do, well then we know who hurt you, don't we? So they can't really come after Lonnie now and murder him in the street down here. Because I'll know and you will know who did that. And they can't afford that because they're perfect, remember? In their society. See, and in my last letter, Frank, yeah. I got to express this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is I refused any offer or contract by any member of the RCMP due to the threat to my safety and my life. Yeah. Pretty and, sad and, you and, had to do that, isn't it? And that's what it come down to. Yeah. And at this time, I expressed my right to sovereignty. Yeah. Because I am a sovereign being. You bet. I do not. That those people do not represent me anymore. Nope. I claim my property. Yep. Two square miles. All mineral claims. Yep. All airspace. Yep. Around my property, as my sovereign right to be an individual. Yep. And these people can all go float a boat. Yep. Because they do not represent me. They're representing themselves, that's and right. that's for self gain and self benefit. That's right. And. You know, that's my perception, <coughs> yeah. and that's my response. We, we share that. We share that. I and mean, it, it, uh, all they're doing is protecting each other. That's right. Now, the, the, and that, you know, you either got to be a part of the problem or a part of the solution. Part of the solution is when somebody reports a cop like Collister murdering somebody, they need to go and get that cop and get him out of our system and charge him with those crimes and put him in prison where he belongs. That's what I advocate. I don't advocate going around killing all cops. No, I don't either. Nope, because it's not all cops that are doing this. And the ones that are standing back and not saying anything and, 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 and endorsing and, and helping these cops get away with these crimes, you are a part of the problem. You will never be a part of the solution until you speak up and say, this is wrong. And my oath of I will follow orders goes out the fucking window and 
you actually stand up and protect our society, our children. Your children, your very own children, you cops that are not saying anything, you judges that don't say anything, you lawyers that don't say anything, and especially you politicians that expect that X on that piece of paper, need to absolutely go trip over everybody else to find out why this person was not charged with that crime. If I committed that crime with that little girl, I would be charged and I would be in prison because that's what my system, our system, dictates. That's not happening here. And I found that the RCMP are above the law. Sure they are. Sure they are. They have sovereign immunity. Sovereign immunity. So I don't you know. No like, accountability. No accountability, and I mean you know like uh, people like us, we come forward, we get victimized. I never had no criminal record until I reported a murder. <laughs> you know, they have one mandate, Frank. That yeah. I believe they have one mandate yeah. to make us all the criminals and and feed their system. Bill C fifty one is trying to do that. Bill C fifty one makes me. A terrorist. And me. And you and anyone else that speaks up against the government or any entity of that government. That can't happen. There. When you lose your voice, your society ceases to exist. And if the laws don't apply to all, <coughs> they then, don't then, apply to then none. They shouldn't have to apply to none. No. No, and that's right. absolutely that. That is my reason I, for claiming sovereignty. Yeah, I have said that in open court. The laws apply to all, or the laws apply to none. That's how a society is supposed to work. Not the laws apply to you, and not them, and not them. That's not how it works. I'm not a slave. It can't work that way. I'm, well, we all are slaves. I'm not a slave to their society that they're no. they're they're benefiting and I'm yep. getting nothing. Well, that's what we are, aren't we? Yes. We're slaves to this society that we're supposed to uh, believe that everything is rosy and they're all perfect and we're all a bunch of fucking criminals. That's right. Or we're delusional. Delusional. And they oh, come yeah. after you yeah. with psychological oh, yeah. Oh, warfare. Sure. Oh yeah, we're all delusional. Yeah. Uh, we are all delusional if we think that these people actually work for us because they don't. And the ones that try to, they get victimized too. So they just don't say anything. Oh, like Vic Toes when he stated in Parliament yeah. that he was going to look into the getting the medical records of Paul Collister. Yeah. Because I've never, ever not said from yeah. day one that I didn't shoot him. Yeah. There you go. But I cannot get the medical records. Yeah, because there's absolutely nobody with mandate to do so. Oh no, of course not. Freedom of Information Act protects them there, right? And uh, and you're not going to get a judge to give an order to that effect. And uh, you know, and, and uh, I mean, you know, when you do go into court and say something in court, they strike it from the record, and right. they're in control of that. That's right. And when you do go to court, they silence you with the gag order. You bet. Uh, so I can't speak. Yeah. I I could I. For yep. myself, yeah, I could always prove my case. Sure, and made it about money. Yeah, like Mrs. You can't be a Mrs. Sue Bush. somebody. Yeah, and I understand yeah. why they did that. Yeah, because they were wrong. Yeah, but I chose not the money. Yeah, I chose this for our children. Yeah, they and said they said the same thing to me. Yeah, get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. And the minute you get a fucking lawyer, all of a sudden it's about money. It's about the crown. And you're supposed to take a pile of money yep. and walk away and they don't get charged with their crimes. It's buried. That's what they do. See? And I say they because it's them and us. And these people know that they're <coughs> these cops are committing crimes. Yeah. And anybody that knows that the crime is being committed. Are an accessory to that crime. Or an accessory if they don't do nothing. That's the definition of it. But these people don't seem to think they are an accessory to those crimes. 
Well, but because nobody holds them accountable. That's right. So it's up to you people yep. in the world yep. to decide yep. what, what you want to do. Do you want to let them kill? You want to make your kids slaves? You want to use them as like sex slaves or? Yeah, and that's what they're doing. Like, I mean, uh, no, they're doing pedophile yeah, stuff. Yeah, and every other crime in humanity. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're committing the same crimes we are. Yeah, yeah, and they're doing it with no accountability. No accountability at all. So, so they're not committing a crime, are they? As far as they're concerned. So, if anybody wants to judge me, Frank. Mm -hmm. They can come and speak to me. Yeah. I'll show them their truth. I'll yep. tell them their truth. There you go. There I've always go. offered that right from yep. day one. Yeah. And it ain't about me. That's right. It's it's about all of us. It's about it's about our children. Humanity. And it's about everybody. We are all the blood of all mankind. And that's the bottom line here. We have we have to make sure that everybody is served equally under the law of man and the yoke of law. And quit victimizing us. Yeah. I mean, you know, you shouldn't be a victim for reporting a crime. And that's what's happening here. And that's why I'm standing up. And yeah. I've continued to be a victim yeah. after everybody knew. Yeah. And I can prove that. And yeah. Well, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, putting all of Lonnie's documents out there, as they've done mine. And you can view his documents. Uh, you've heard what he witnessed and who was involved. Uh, you know, there's countless people in the system. And many more aspects yep. to it. Yeah, and in the, in the I documents. I can, personally, I cannot uh, expose or talk to about it all because it's so complex well, and, of course. and so involved. And it's 16 years later. Yeah, and I've been dealing with it for that yep. long. And there they've continued to victimize me. Yeah. Well, after today, <laughs> I, I, I doubt very much if they're going to be victimizing you anymore. But nevertheless, I mean, these people are psychopaths. That Collister, obviously a psychopath. And again, I'm going to say, it's not all cops that are doing this. That's right. And I do not advocate anybody harming a cop. Nope. Because I don't believe... One crime, it, all, you, all you're doing is benefit. Oh, uh, you're stooping to their level, Lonnie. Well, you're benefiting them yep. because right. then they're going to use they can that, justify that crime that. against them yep. and and yep. make us the bad guys. That's right. And perhaps that's what they're doing. Who knows, right? And I choose not to, yep. to kill any of them. Yeah, there you go. But I say, and I'm sure Lonnie will agree, any cops that are out there that are knowing that their brethren are committing these crimes, Stand up. Stand up. You're only hurting your children, and you're hurting our whole society by not doing that. And Mr. Harper, I'll tell you this. Quit being a goddamn coward, because you are ultimately our leader, and you're not doing your job. He's responsible for all of these people. That's right. All of them. Every one of these people that are committing these crimes, you are responsible. And you are also an accessory to those crimes. Especially when I have contacted you about crimes, no, Lonnie no. has contacted you about crimes, and numerous others, I'm sure. And you become an accessory, sir. And I don't want a leader in this country that's an accessory to pedophilia and murder. And nobody else does either in our society. Perhaps in yours, yeah, but not in ours. Anyway, I'm gonna we're gonna call her quits. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome, Lonnie. And anybody out there that wants their story done the same way, feel free, come and see me. And everybody that watches my videos, I know there's hundreds of millions and billions of people around the world that do this. Because they know that I turn on the lights in the hall of truth. Come and see me. And remember, say my name so these sons of bitches know. Lonnie doesn't want to be famous. I don't want to be famous. We couldn't care less about fame. We're talking about real shit here. Truth. Truth. And turning on the lights in the hall of truth.
Till next time, when I turn on some more lights for you. Can I say one more phrase? Sure, go ahead, say whatever you want, Lonnie. It's about time we stand up. Everybody. Because they're going to victimize our kids. All of them. And I will not allow that in my life. They're doing that with Bill C-51. And they're going to victimize us all. Yep. Thank you. I agree. You're welcome, Lonnie. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again.